Welcome to our lecture online. In order to get a better understanding of how to deal with sample distributions, let's do this other example, slightly different from the previous one. We're dealing with a number of kindergartner, kindergarten children and specifically their height. And it turns out that the average height, the mean of their height is 39 inches and what we're trying to do here, oh, and it has a standard deviation of two inches, so that about 68% of all kindergarten children have a height somewhere between 37 and 41 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a single sample of 25 kindergarten children, a single sample, and what we want to know is what is the probability that by grabbing a sample of 25 children that the average of the height of that sample will fall somewhere between 38 and a half and 40 inches. Hmm. So what that means is we're going to need to find the standard score of the sample distribution and of course the standard score is equal to the number of standard deviations from the mean. All right. So that means we need to compare the standard deviation of the population to the standard deviation of our sample distribution. And we can say that the standard deviation of the population is equal to the square root of n, where n is the sample size, times the standard deviation of the sample distribution. In other words, we can find the standard deviation of the sample distribution by simply taking the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size, so in this case that's 2 divided by the square root of 25, which is equal to 2 divided by 5, which is equal to 0 0.4. All right, so that's the standard deviation of the sample distribution. Now, how does that convert to the standard score? And of course, the standard score, we use the letter Z for that. And so z represents the number of standard devi deviations from the mean. So if the mean is 39, then how many standard deviations do we need to go to the right to find the upper limit? So let's say that the mean is 39, so that the upper limit would be equal to 40. Now going from 39 to 40, how many standard deviations is that? So of course z is equal to the difference between the value and the mean of the distribution divided by the standard deviation. So in this case, this would be the standard deviation of the sample size because what we're trying to do is we're trying to find how many standard deviations from the mean our sample distribution is. All right, so this is equal to 40 minus 39 divided by 0 0.4. So this is equal to that would be 1 divided by 0 0.4, which is equal to 2.5. So that's 2.5 standard deviations to the right of the mean for the sample distribution. Hmm. But do we need to use the standard deviation of the sample distribution? Let's see here. No, because we need to find the standard deviation of that. Two. Hang on, hang on, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Yep, yep, yep. No, no. I'm good. I'm good. Cut that out. I'm good. All right. Okay. So now we have the number of standard deviations, the standard score, to the right of our mean in our sample distribution. Now we need to do the same for the left side. So here we can say that z for the standard, uh, the z, which is of course the standard score, the number of standard deviations from the mean for our sample distribution to the left of the mean. So that's going to be equal to uh, 38.5 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation of the sample distribution, which in this case is 38.5 minus the mean is 39. Oop, it's a terrible looking three. 39 divided by 0 0.4 which is equal to minus 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.4, which is minus 1.25. So now we have our two z-scores, 2.5 to the right and a minus 1.25 to the left. That's going to be the spread. So we need a table to figure out what percentage of the total 50% on the right side corresponds to the 
region from 39 to 40 and then we have to figure out the percentage so let's call this A and let's call this B the percentage to the left side of the mean so that will be figured out from here and we're going to need a table so here's my table I look up Z equals 2.5 so Z equals 2.5 and that corresponds to so Z equals 2.5 corresponds to a number equal to 0 0.49377 49377 which is equal to 49.377 percent so that means we have a 49.377 percent almost 50 percent probability to be somewhere between 39 and 40 for a sample size of 25. now what about on the left side well, for z equals to uh, minus 1.25, that corresponds to the number of my table of, uh, let me find 1.25, I see 1 1.2, 1 1.21, 1 1.22, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, there it is, and it's 39.435. So 0 and then of course that is equal to 39.435 percent and that's the that's the probability region to the left side of the mean represented by the letter b so this is here by the letter a and here this is representing letter b so now for the total probability so total probability we simply have to add a plus b so in this case we add 49.435 377% and we add that to the 39.435% when we do that we get 2 1 we get 1 we get 8 we get 8 1 we get 88.812% and so this is the probability 88.812% that if we take a sample of 25 kindergarten children, we measure their heights so of those of that sample of 25, that means that there is 88.8% .8 probability that the average of the sample will fall between 38.5 and 40 inches in height. Hmm, that's almost 9 out of 10 kids will fall between those two high ranges when the average of the whole population is 39 and the standard deviation of the population is 2. And that is how it's done. Of course, you need one of these tables because without it, you can't do the problem. Integrate everything. Or you can integrate it. <laughs> I'd rather have a table. <laughs>